What's going on, world? This is your girl, Marky Lemons Rowell, and I'm going to tell you, this is a very exciting week. And oftentimes, I record on Monday, but we're not recording on Monday this week. We are really revving up for the Realtor Conference and Expo, and then what's to come after the Realtor Conference and Expo. So I have, for the past two months, been interviewing my fellow Realtor and Conference speakers because they are the most dynamic people in the country. And I went and I actually went through the roster of speakers and I wanted to pick people who I thought would benefit you, but also people who have products and services and they have more than one thing to aid you in your business. And this young gentleman, once I start reading about him, I'm just amazed I didn't know him before the Realtor Conference and Expo. But what's going on, David Hill? How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. And thank you for calling me young. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, you're as young as you feel, and yeah. I'll be 50 on my next birthday, and I love to tell everybody because I understand my spirit and my, my aura is younger than that. So I use it oftentimes because the average age of a realtor is going to be 54, and they always complain about technology. And with each passing year, I'm closer to the average age of a realtor, and I use mm -hmm. technology. So it's something that... uh. I've learned to leverage in my business the older I get with using technology because so many people try to complain about it. All right. Good stuff. Good to know. I, I did not know that, to be honest with you. I, I thought the average age was more like 70. So, <laughs> Well, okay. Let me say this. Age is nothing but a number, but it has a lot to do with mindset, right? And so I would say that the mindset sometimes seems a little older because of the inability to adapt to change at the current rate of change. And so I've just had uh, ablation and sclerotherapy for vein disease. And as I tell people, I need my 25-year-old spirit. I need my legs wow. to be 25 years old to match the spirit. I don't care how old yeah. I am, right? <laughs> So I was reading your profile and we have we have quite a few things in common. I see that you are a KW instructor and I was a partner in a KW franchise. So I love Keller Williams. You well, thank are. You. Thank you. I, you also are an author of the sales playbook, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And then you also have a podcast. Yes. Uh, and your podcast is the path to mastery, right? Just be how to stay to relevant. Master. Okay, so you got a lot of things going on, but I want to kind of dive into the sales uh, playbook because I've been talking about sales a lot lately. And because we're coming up on the end of the calendar year, I know that realtors need to be in business planning mode for 2020. Real estate is unique to me in the fact that pre-license does not teach you how to sell real estate. Mm. And so they come into this world, they're armed with this license, and they don't know bupkis about selling anything because we don't necessarily, well, one, they don't have previous experience. And I, don't, I know you've been in sales longer than I have, but as a child growing up, my household made sales sound negative. You know, if the insurance yeah. man, ah, oh, here come the insurance man trying to sell me something. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, here come the so-and-so trying to sell me something. So if we were to just go back and start at the very beginning and take in all of the different collateral you're creating, what is the first thing? a licensee or a realtor should do. I, I got my new license. I just passed my exam, right? I, I got this little card, a piece of paper, whatever it is in your state, right? Woo-wee, yeah. what should I do now? Oh, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, inter interesting question. What should you do? I'm, I'm, you're making me think back to what did I do? Um, honestly, I, I found the top producing realtor in the office that I was joining Mm -hmm. And uh, and I joined his team. That yeah. was what I did, and and I'm I'm glad that I did that because it, what it did was it it taught me. Um, I didn't have to figure things out on my own, right? It's not like I had to go figure out how to how to sell real estate and how to be effective at it. I saw somebody that was really doing it. And I just essentially followed his model, and he taught me how to call for sale by owners and expireds pretty much right out of the gate, and that's how I built my business. So. I would say the first thing, um, and I may be missing, I, I'm, I don't know if there's anything before this, but I would say find someone that's doing what you want to do and, and connect with that person. I don't know if you need to join their team, 
but maybe take them out to lunch and, and pick their brain and figure out how they did what they did and what they think the first step would be, right? I also think it's important to connect with the right brokerage, you know, that works for you, right? I met with three brokerages when I first got my license, right? You know, when you get your license, you get all those phone calls, everybody wants you, right? And uh, so I met with three and, and I chose Keller and just because it fit with my, with what I aligned with, right? That, that was it. There were, there were three I met with and what he said to me was made the most sense and that, that's where I went. Okay. Now, you know what? The, f the first thing you really said was you need to do some research. You said you, you found out who that top producer was. Yeah. And I'm often baffled by the lack of research that we do to become entrepreneurs. And I had to remind people all the time, you're an entrepreneur, you're self-employed. How are you going to make it happen? And mm -hmm. everyone comes in and it's, oh, are you going to give me leads? Well, I'm pretty sure you live by the MREA book, right? So you understand conversion rates, the probability of something occurring between zero and one, and you're going to leave no stone unturned. But if you were to uh, think about everyone that you've had the opportunity to interview, what are, I'm going to ask, this is, ooh, you're going to have to make, make you think again. What are three things that people have told you they've done that have allowed them to build a sustainable real estate business? Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's another, um, you're making me think today. This is good. I'm sorry. No, it's Friday. I'm sleep too, actually. Yeah, I know. I'm going to work your brain. Look, by the time I get done, you're going to go to bed. All right. That's what yeah, we plan. Yeah, well, I, I, I got to go <laughs> see my daughters in a little bit. Um, oh. All right. Let me, so I would say, listen, my first transaction uh, was with this guy named Mike Parent and it was the first house we sold. And I got lucky. I, my first house I sold was like a $450,000 house, right? Woo. But the, the listing agent shared with me, um, he said, in this industry or in this business, you need to understand the word fair. He said, hmm. it has to be fair. Like, so when you're doing a dealing with somebody, it has to be fair for the buyer. It has to be fair for the seller. It has to be fair for the other realtor. And it has to be fair for you. And that's the way you're going to be successful in this industry. If you always think from that perspective of fair. And that was something I never forgot. That was probably the first thing, the first lesson I learned, like out in the field on sales, you know? So I would say um, that one, number one, fair. Number two is, I, is what you said. I mean, the reality is, um, you know, this is an industry where, and I, and I alluded to it, alluded to it a little bit at the beginning was um, I found a model that worked and I followed it, right? So the MREA book is a model. I'm also a Keller Williams University trainer. So I, I understand the models. Um, and, you know, finding a model that works and following it. And, and I personally would tell you that I didn't, I didn't do that 100%, right? I found somebody that was successful and he was successful because he did four sale by owners in expireds and that was his business. So he didn't necessarily follow the model. He followed some of it in that area. But what ended up happening is I joined his team. And within six months, I kind of knew, what, felt, I felt I knew what I needed to do. So I left his team. And then I went and I ended up going into solo for a while. Then I started my own team. But I never did anything besides for sale by owners and expireds. So what ended up happening is after about five or six years, I hit a ceiling. Like I could only go so far with my business based on just working for sale by owners and expires. It got me up to like, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 transactions. I think it was like 60 transactions. So if I needed to break through that, now I needed to start going in some other areas to find business because I was limiting myself. And the other challenge I had in, uh, this is a, you know, I'll say it now because it's a lesson I learned. Um, when you work FISBOs and expires, um, I came into to real estate with a lot of, um, prospecting background, right? I've been on the phones since I was a kid at 17, you know, we were setting appointments for Kirby vacuum cleaner salesman, right? And then I worked in a call center for a credit card company. So I've always been in phone sales of some capacity. And for me, it was kind of like the one and done. I hate to say it that way, but like I was really, really good at prospecting. Like I'd get a for sale by owner to list this house with me. And then as soon as the house was on MLS, I'd be like on to the next, right? And either the house would sell or it didn't sell. And I think, so I guess to summarize what I'm getting at is 
I probably should have been a lot better at, at the service side of the business a lot earlier. Now, I've been in the business 17 years. I started in 2002. I've only been with Keller Williams. Um, it's what I know. But it, it took me a lot of years of pain, beating my head off the, uh, the wall, and you know, just not a lot of repeat business before I really started to get it. So even though I started with that, I guess, model of fizzbos and expireds, I didn't really follow the model of the, the millionaire real estate agent book, which is many different sources of getting business. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and so it's, we, I got a lot to talk about right here with what you just said, yeah. right? Um, the first one is being fair. And I've had to explain to my agents time and time again, it, it's, I, I've never said it the way that you said it. But that's kind of the concept. I remember we were doing a short sale deal. And at the time, the, the price point on this uh, was negotiated down to $14,900. However, it was all, yeah, $14,900. Yeah, we have those in Chicago on the south side. <laughs> so make a long story short, I knew that Bank of America had a special compensation program. And essentially, they would pay anybody $3,000 would be the minimum. So I told my agent, who was the listing agent on this, and what she wanted to do was still offer the buyer's agent the same co-op that she had put into the MLS. But she was doing it off of the new sales price that had been negotiated at $14,900. And I told her, I said, let me be clear with you. When you get to the closing table, when you get to the closing person, when you get to the closing table, and that person sees that the total compensation is $3,000 and they're getting XYZ percentage of $14,900 and you're getting the rest, you're going to have a fight on your hands. I said, mm -hmm. I said 100%, I don't think that that's fair. And here's the thing, you didn't even know about the special compensation. I told it to you. I said, my recommendation is maybe you don't say anything about it, but when you get to the closing table, you need to offer that person a bonus. You need to give them more than what they're seeing in the MLS based yeah. on the amount that you're making. That is what would be fair or right. Or that person, it, it's just, you didn't know it existed. You thought you were going to get the same thing that person was getting on the $14,900. So that means that it's substantially more money, right? Even though it's only $3,000. And so I'm always about, you, you owe your clients fiduciary responsibilities, right? However, I'm going to provide my fiduciary responsibilities, but you still need to do right by everybody in the transaction. I've had sellers who want to take the window treatments. No, sweetheart, the contract yeah. stated that you were leaving all window treatments. Just because those are custom don't mean that they aren't window treatments. Sure. You know, so b being fair is, is really important because we, we're the only industry I think about that we are in, you, even you and I, we're in competition with one another. But in order to get a deal done, we have to come back and we have to collaborate. Sure. And if I've screwed over you or anyone else who's a part of that process, you're not going to want to collaborate with me ever 100%. again yeah. no. in the future. Now, I'm just mesmerized by the fact that you built a, a solid business off of FISBOs and expired. But if you were 17, when you learned the business, you learned how to do the business when you did not have fear. Uh, yeah, I probably didn't know any better, right? right. You, 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 you did what they told you to do at 17. Sure. I and it just, worked. Yeah, so I was working, yeah. You made a living. So when you came over to this side of the business, you I looked at us like. At 17, no, be honest. Well, I was making <laughs> calls, but I, I don't know how effective I was. But I, I was like, the guy's like, listen, it don't even matter, man. Just have fun. If they hang up on you, they're supposed to hang up on you. I learned that at a young age. Just, you know, if exactly. you call people, 19 people are supposed to hang up on you and say no. So that means if I'm on number 18 and I know I'm going to get my yes in two calls, I learned that young. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of us, because this is the second, third, fourth occupation, we don't understand that. No. And mm -hmm. that's why we often give up too fast. So if I was to come back, the fact that you were great at for sale by owners and expired just blows my mind because that is really a niche. It is not for the faint at heart. And you all you have a different type of skill set. But when we go and look at the MREA book and we look at how people build sustainable long-term business, 
I applaud you for admitting what you did not do right. And that was to build those long term uh, relationships where you would build a referral based business. And oftentimes I am seeing agents still to this day. They are one and done. They know how to churn it. But Mm. when people after, I would say, three to four years of that process, let's say five max, you should have a database big enough that you don't have to do that anymore. Because if you're nurturing those 150 to 250 transactions, they should now become the next uh, referral sources to fuel your business, right? But you've but you've learned that. So as a result of writing the sales playbook, what are you doing to, to different today than you were doing when you initially came into real estate? Uh, you, you know, it's, I think you nailed it. It's, it's right now, everything's about a high level of service, the highest level I can possibly create. It's, it's, uh, I'm a different person than I was 17 years ago, right? I was, you know, I come from the projects. I was a, you know, I, I, I was, I'm all grit, right? I, you know, I tell people, people say, what, what are you good at? I'm good at persistence. I say talent is my, you know, persistence is my talent, right? If, if I have any talent, it's that I'm persistent and, and that's it. And I've always been like that. And that comes from my childhood. So you bring someone like me into the business, that's really, really just a grinder and I'm just going to keep grinding, but there was no, other side of that, like the softer side, the side like that. I want to, I want to help you. I want to serve you. Uh, I just want to get the business right. So I had to learn and, and, and understand how that was really limiting me. And you know, you get old, I get older, I get smarter. Right. Um, so I think that was, was it. And from writing the book, the book's all about connection. It's all about connecting with people, um, digging really deep on questions, helping people to understand, um, you know, like we talked about fairness. One of the challenges you and I have as realtors is the clients don't want to be fair. Like me, you may want to be fair. I may want to create a fair deal, but my seller doesn't want to, right? Or, or, or the buyer doesn't want to be fair. So we have to help them self-discover what's really important to them and help them become fair. So the book's also about asking really great questions. But ultimately what it's about is um, helping agents to get over that fear of picking up the phone or, or talking to somebody in line at a Starbucks. I mean, one of my best clients literally came from me just talking to him in line at Starbucks because, and it started with like, Hey, yeah, it's nice out there today. Right. And next thing you know, we're in a conversation. He's a financial advisor. I'm a realtor. We ended up setting another time, you know, we grabbed, so exchanged cards. We met, we had a coffee and the guys giving me probably 20 transactions since I met him. Wow. You know, and, and these are, uh, these are people, wealthy people, you know what I mean? And I've given him a lot of business too, but just, just saying something to line to, to somebody in line at a Starbucks, um, you know, social media people, you know, and, and that, so we're in the process actually now of doing a rewrite. So on the rewrite, my book was written in 2013. Um, we weren't texting as much in 2013. We weren't doing as much social media in 2013. So now I think in order for, to be successful at the phone or on the phone, it has to be a combination of all of those things. So that's, that's what my next book's going to be about. Not just the phone. Like, listen, if you're a salesperson and, and you want to get over your call reluctance, because we all suffer from it, every one of us. All right, I've been on the phones already for two hours today, and I deal with call reluctance every single day. I have letters right here on my board. I can show, actually, I will show it to you. It's a, see this board right here? Uh-huh. You can see that or not. Can you see yes. It? it says, I am here to help. <laughs> it says, I was born to help. help. <laughs> I have to keep looking at that. <laughs> Seriously, Mark, I have to keep looking at that. And it reminds me. Actually, it says at the bottom, too. It says, my, my talent is my persistence, right? Uh-huh. That's it. And, and I have to continue to remind myself, I'm not calling for me. I'm calling to help them. And if I can help them, then I achieve my goal. And that goes right back to the same thing with how I was able to change my, my thought process around coming from a place of helping and serving people to coming from a place of wanting to just earn a commission. You know, when I came into the business, uh, my why was at the time I was an unwedded mother and my son, he had become accustomed to a certain lifestyle, my oldest son. And I wanted to be able to maintain that lifestyle. But I think what else was kind of funny, I, 
I am the vision of what was a spoiled brat. And as I tell people, I was a spoiled brat in the sense that they gave me everything that I asked for, but I dare not throw a temper tantrum because they would lay hands. So I came from a whooping, a whooping household. Yeah. Um, so we'll give you what you want if you act accordingly, but you act a fool, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a no. And so when I came into real estate, it was all about me. Everything was about me. And you realize, right? You yeah, realize, yeah, yeah it, it had nothing to do with you, right? Uh, but Maybe the- you should have seen the suits I used to wear when I first started in real estate. No, no seriously. Like, I, I, it was, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you just thought about that suit, yeah, right? Yeah, but the suit was like, it was all about the suit and nothing else, you know? <laughs> I don't even wear suits anymore. If anything, I'll throw a blazer on. Uh, yeah, yeah it, so. it, it's different. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and so um, I did a, so, a short stint at Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. And at Pfizer, I'm calling on doctors, right? It, do, it don't really get much worse than that. No offense to the doctors, but they are a piece of work to deal with. And I realized I had to become a chameleon and that I had to fit my personality and style to the people in which I was working with, often mirroring, you know, how they speak, how they talk, things of that nature. So with that being said, um, I do a lot of research on the people. I know the people I'm doing business with because I need to know everything that makes them happy. And then I guess over a period of time, I've kind of taken on their personalities, right? Because I tend to deal with directors of education. They're a lot softer and, and uh, mild, more mild manner than I am as a person. And I think it's calmed me down and, and toned me down uh, or refined me because I understand that maybe my personality might be a little overwhelming to them. I know I, know I have an overwhelming personality, so I'm constantly tweaking and working on myself in sales, right? Because you want people got to like and trust you yeah. in order to do business with you. And if you're not resonating with them or they don't trust you, you're not going to get their business. Yes, 100%. Now, in your podcast, Path uh, to Mastery, uh, is it a path to mastering one thing? Is it uh, the, all aspects of sale? What is the path to mastery? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, with my podcast, I initially started it when I wrote my book. I want, it was a way I did a book tour and then it was going to be a way to get drive traffic to sell my book. The podcast actually evolved into more of a, um, a sales platform. And it's a lot of it's real estate, to be honest with you. I, 90% of, of what we talk about is real estate, the real estate industry. Although I've had Grant Cardone on the show. I've had Gary Vaynerchuk. I've had some ridiculous guests that I've been in. And again, I've gotten those guests just based on my persistence, right? Um, just, however, path to mastery, to answer your question, is just, it's, it's, it's a never ending path as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's, a, it's a path of never ending improvement, meaning we're always, it doesn't matter that I've been on the phones prospecting for 30 years. I still keep this right in front of me when I'm making my phone calls, right? So, when I'm calling people, I have the scripts right there because I'm always refining that, right? Sorry, I'm jumping off the up, but I'm always looking to get better. I don't believe like one day I'm gonna show up and I'm like, okay, I'm the master guru now. No, I'm, I'm always, every day I'm learning. You know, another thing that helped me right now is, um, is transcendental meditation. I started doing TM about a month ago, um, which has been phenomenal. I actually, I just did an episode. If you wanna check out my podcast, um, I would check out episode 140 with um, Edward Smith, and it's, uh, it's on transcendental meditation. It's called Get in the Zone with Meditation. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an episode. It, you'll, you'll, it's an awesome episode, but it's not my standard like, hey, here's how to go sell, you know, 10 houses a month or, or, or here's how, how to clo- you know, close the deal or get over call reluctance. It's, it's on how meditation helps to be present to, uh, to you know, to create that pause, you know, before you respond to, you, you can respond instead of reacting. It's, it's been tremendous for me. Hmm. I mean, I've always, done, I've played with meditation for 10 years now, uh, but this is, this is just at a, at a different level, I think, of meditation. Ah, now, I have uh, meditation as part of, is it the Miracle Morning? The Miracle Morning. Yep, and um, I'm doing 10 seconds, and I know I need to get better because it's yeah. like, the, it's the hardest 
10 seconds, wait, 10 seconds, 10 minutes of my that, day, right? I would say 10 seconds. Is yeah, yeah, no, no, no. 10, I can, I can concentrate. I can <laughs> meditate for 10 seconds. seconds. You got some issues. No, no, I got some issues. <laughs> you right about that. I'm sorry. It's the hardest 10 minutes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, no, I get it. And I'm like, oh, because your mind, right, just will not act right. And it just wants to wander. Right. Sure, so I, yeah. I visually see me just pulling it back in. Do not worry about what you need to do at 10 o'clock. Do not worry about the one o'clock call. Marky, it is not next week. <laughs> Get back centered. So I'm definitely going to check your show out on meditation out. because um, I understand the benefits of it. And every time that I am in a constant routine, I perform better. Yeah. Well, the, the, the cool thing with transcendental meditation is it does a mantra. So whenever you catch yourself, because that's the reality is a, a good meditation session, like my sessions, I do two 20-minute sessions. It's, it's about 23 minutes twice a day, wow. once in the morning and once before dinner. And I have not missed a session yet. It's been about 30 days. So, but the point of it is that the mantra as you're, as you're in meditation and you start thinking about, oh my God, this seller is just being such a knucklehead then you'll, you'll catch yourself and you go back to the mantra. And that is the win right there. And you may have a whole meditation that's 19 minutes of just think about everything. And then all of a sudden you catch yourself and go back to the mantra. And that was the successful meditation. Any meditation is a successful meditation. And that's what I'm learning. So yeah, so I mean, I'm going to meditation clinics now. We did a four day meditation retreat out in Vermont on Lake Champlain. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's really, really cool stuff. It's helped me tremendously. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to have to look in. I'm going to have to look into that. TM. TM. I've TM. never heard of it before. So yeah. TM, TM.org is the website. TM.org. Um, yeah. And please, have, you know, check out my podcast. Have your listeners check it out because it, there's, a, there's a lot on there. And the, the doctor, he's a, he's a, he was a, a medical doctor um, he left medicine and, and went into meditation because his patients were getting more results from meditation than they were from medicine. He, he graduated from John, John Hopkins, uh, Hot, what, Hopkins mm -hmm. University, I believe. It's on the podcast, but yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, so I'm glad to, to hear that because I know that I need to quiet my mind, uh, sure. as, as one would say, every single day. At the Realtor Conference and Expo, what do you believe the biggest takeaway you're going to provide to Realtor members? Oh, man. Well, I, I would say the biggest takeaway that I want to provide to them is that I want everybody to understand that they have a superpower uh, and we all have a superpower, right? Mm -hmm. And I want them to be able to connect with that superpower and then use that superpower to grow their business organically. Okay. I, I, I can, I try, an example of that, um, you know, as a story I share, there was a, a, a real estate agent whose business, I'm going to do it really cool. Business was, was kind of struggling a bit. And she had come to one of our consultants and, she, and he had said, well, what do you love doing? And she said, I don't even know. Well, go home, talk to your family, find out what you love doing, come back tomorrow. The next day she came back and she shared that, um, you know, the things I love is I love uh, tennis. Um, I love, uh, I only love tennis and really shopping. And she said, my family said I love cooking, but I don't really love cooking. I only cook because I have to keep those people alive, you know, is what she said. And so, and, she's, and she was sad. She's like, I, I don't play tennis and I don't really have money to shop. And, and he said, okay, well, what, what can we do with that? And he, she's like, I don't know. What, what do you do? She's like, well, what about tennis? When do you play tennis? She's like, I don't play tennis. Okay, great. How many of your clients play tennis? Um, I don't know. Well, how many people in your database? She's like, I don't know, probably like 500. Okay, so why not reach out to your database and see who plays tennis? She's like, I don't know. I never really thought about that. So then she went, reached out to her database. She started off by sending an email just saying, hey, I'm thinking about getting a tennis thing going. And, you know, I guess 10 people responded, right? Like, yeah, I play tennis. Great. So then she got in conversation with those people, called them. Next thing you know, they had a group that was meeting to play tennis on Wednesdays at like 11 a.m. You know, maybe like eight people showed up. 
And then that thing grew over months and months to all of a sudden they're having like this bi-weekly tennis tournament where they've got like 30 to 40 people showing up. She's renting multiple courts, you know, and now obviously she's the sponsor. They've got sponsors. They've got banners up. They've got the tennis balls with logos. They've got waters. They're sending out an email every week to her whole database saying, hey, this is who won this week. And these are the stats. And who do you think is using that person for real estate now? The, all the people who are part of the tournament. Exactly. And the other people are bringing people. So that, that's an example of find your superpower and make the business fun again. And that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what my session is on. And, you know, finding motivated sellers, yes, it's, it's part of that. It, it, that's a part of it as well. But ultimately, it's, um, if you're having fun and you can make – and you, let's say if, if I'm the best part of your day – you're going to want to spend time with me, right? You're going to want to help me out. So for a lot of those people that are like, who's playing tennis at 11 a.m. on Wednesday mornings? People who like tennis. <laughs> who like tennis, yeah. And typically people that, you know, are financially in pretty good shape and typically moms and people like that, right? Yeah. So that was, and that was one of the favorite parts of their week. And then uh, what she ended up also doing later on was starting a shopping club. So once a month, they would meet at the mall Starbucks, a group of people, and they would all go out and they would find something and they bring what they found back and they would, they would all kind of share what they got and they talk about how they found it and the deal they got and the whole thing. Again, a super, right? Using one of the things you love and in, in building your business around it. Wow. That's a, that is actually a phenomenal idea um, because I'm, when I think about online, people always have problems with sharing something about themselves. And she could take that um, offline meeting, but she could market it online to let people know this is her passion. And then there's other tennis clubs that have uh, online private groups, right? So I could see how that could just take on a whole life, but now she's in shape. She loves the subject matter. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. That's uh, I gotta I gotta I gotta get in touch with my dang on superpower. What do what I gotta <laughs> think about? Cause I'm always talking and I'm a workaholic, and so it's sort of like I love what I do for a living. The fact that I get paid to talk, I received a check mark in failure to exercise self control every quarter of grammar school and high school. Every quarter. So it's kind of a, a running joke in my house that they pay me to talk. But this has always been my passion. All, always. Sure. Um, so maybe that's how I've tapped into my superpower. But I need a hobby. So I'm going to think about how can I take scrapbooking or origami or something of that nature and, and turn it into a group that just falls in love with me and refers me. Isn't that cool? And, and here's the other cool part about it, Marky, is now – you got to go out and you got to call every single person in your database and say, hey, you know, I, I get, you know, you don't even have to say you haven't called them in a while or you could if you want. It's up to you. But, hey, I just want to reconnect. Hope things great. How's the house? Oh, it's amazing. Awesome. Listen, I'm starting this tennis group. Do you play tennis? Love to connect with you, right? Making a connection now again with your client. Whether they play tennis or not is, is probably not even the most important thing. Some will. But now you're making those connections and everything. This business is about connection, especially as our industry is changing so much. Yeah. Our industry is getting disrupted big time right now. And if you're not staying in connection with your clients, I'll tell you Zillow is. I'll tell you Redfin is. Real, you know, some of these other companies. And they're, and they're trying to do it through social media, though. Well, now, I mean, that's another whole topic. So, yeah, we don't yeah, that is that tangent. But I tell people all the time, there's no other place outside of social media that people tell you all their business in real time and you have the ability to listen for free. And so it is one of the greatest listening devices of yeah. all times. And it's not always what people say. It's also the absence of information that tells you people's business. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, social media is very interesting. But if you don't stay in touch, someone is going to stay in touch on your behalf. So it might as well be us. So David, I know I'm going to see you in a few weeks at the Realtor Conference and Expo, but how do people connect with you, purchase your book, listen to your podcast? Where are you online? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Well, podcast, it's easy. I mean, go to wherever you listen to your podcasts, uh, Apple, Stitcher Radio for Android, I think is like the best site. Um, it's called Path to Mastery. Just search Path to Mastery. Um, it comes up. It's, 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 uh, it's you know, 
yeah, I'm very, very, I love my podcast. I'm proud of it. It's awesome. Um, check it out. Let me know what you think. Give us feedback if you want. Uh, the other way to get in touch with me is uh, my website, davidihill.com, davidihill.com, super easy. Um, we do have a set, um, my session at NAR is on Friday the, um, Friday the 8th, I believe, at 1230. So then after the session, um, I'm going to be doing a, a, a webinar series that starts December 5th. That's going to be kind of like a continuation from, from that. So I'll be talking to people. Um, about that event that coming up. So that's another way to connect with me. That'll be on my website, david at davidihill.com. And yeah, and then my email is david at davidihill.com. If you want to shoot me an email, I, I respond to all emails and find me on, so, on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook, the best way to get me on Facebook is my group. And it's just called Path to Mastery. Search groups, Path to Mastery. Every Monday I do like a video. I all, you know, almost daily I put stuff in there that's like valuable content. Uh, for salespeople, real estate agents, just stuff that's going to help, you know, bring value to people and, and make you better at what you do. Path to mastery, right? Awesomeness. Awesome. Well, David, I appreciate your time and energy. Everybody, you go, you connect with my boy so he can help you with mastering your sales. Talk to you guys soon. And I just want to throw this in there and I, yes. I should have said it earlier. <laughs> I, I said this to you before we started recording. I think your podcast is rock solid and I just appreciate you and I appreciate what you do and the, the because listen I I've if you look at my guests I've had some serious guests on my podcast I can listen to their podcast and it's great but they're not bringing a lot of them aren't bringing the same amount of value to, to help people really to be able to achieve their goals as, as, as you are on your podcast. And I just wanted to say that. So, well, thank you. You've that. absolutely made my day. I truly appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. That's, that's legit. I don't just say that to anybody either. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you soon.